Hey, this is bit to brain Today I'm going to show you how to connect uh, Yosemite to an Active Directory, Directory Services, uh, in particular Windows Server 2012. So basically I have an account on Windows Server 2012 I've created, and I want to connect to that from Yosemite. I want to log in using that account as if it was a local account. But actually, since I'm on the domain now, I can share the domain services and whatnot. And domain Windows Server 2012 can actually, you know, see what I'm doing and you can audit and all the other stuff. So the first thing we want to do is click on System Preferences. Click on Users and Groups. Click the padlock. Now you're going to want to put in your Mac administrator uh, username and password, not your Windows Server 2012 user account or admin account or anything like that, just to be sure. Okay, enter that in. We're going to connect. Now you want to click on login options because the first thing we're going to do is bind this to the server. So when I say bind, that just means that it's going to authenticate the Windows Server 2012 server is going to authenticate the username and password. So, and then we can use the services. So click join. Now, 68 1 100 now that is the number of my IP now let me show you something in case you don't see that uh, it's troubleshooting because this could happen to some people um, so let's just say that this was something a little different because uh, I have actually two subnets on my network so let's just say we have that. All right, and now we go to do the same thing we just did. Again, your username and password for your Mac. Join 192.168.1.100. That is the IP address of my Active Directory directory services. Now, you see it's hung up. It's not getting anywhere because it's not on the same subnet. So if you see this happen, the first thing you should check is that IP address on your machine. Okay, so go back there. You can also do that in the terminal. You can do ifconfig and you can see what your IP address is on your machine, but it's just kind of quicker just to do this. So let's just go back here. And my Active Directory directory services is also a DHCP server. So all I have to do is click on DHCP here, uh, which chances are you may have the same. But if not, then just enter an IP address that is on the same subnet. So by that, if it's 255.255.255.0, the first three numbers, the first three uh, octets will be the same. So if yours is 192.168.1, then you want to make that, your, your host machine, the same as that. So what I mean is the Active Directory for mine is 192.168.1.100. So if yours is similar to that, make the first three numbers the same, and then you just need to change the host at the end, and you should be good to go. So we'll go back to users and groups. I'm going to join the domain again, enter in the IP address of my Active Directory directory services, and you see, bam, it comes up right away. So you know if you have a connection, it's going to come up right away. So from here, I want to put in the user account the admin account, username and password for my Windows Server 2012 machine, not the Mac admin password, the Windows Server 2012 admin password. So what you're going to see after this authenticates, which keep your fingers crossed, this shouldn't be a problem, but no, nothing's ever a problem until it is. So. Uh, this is taking a while. Last time I did this, it literally took five seconds. So there we go. You know you're on your domain. We're going to see that little green uh, blob there. So mine is get off my lawn. So from there, we want to go ahead and just click on edit. Now, by the way, I'm just going to show you this now. I might show you this later, but just in case I forget, if you want to unbind this again, just highlight that, click the minus there, Enter in your username and password, your admin account for your Windows Server 2012 machine, and unbind. But we don't want to do that. We'll click on, don't unbind. So let's click on Open Directory Utility. Click the padlock. Again, enter your Mac admin username and password. 
double click Active Directory. And again, there's another option to unbind, but we don't want to do that. So we click this little down arrow. Now, I leave most, all, actually I leave all this the same for the most part. Uh, I keep the shell. I leave this because SMB works well with Microsoft. Uh, the other option is AFP, uh, Apple Filing Protocol, but I leave this SMB. It works well with Microsoft. And the home directory, I leave the same because what's going to happen is when I log in with that Active Directory user account, I'm going to see that pop up here, that folder. And that will stay there until I get rid of the account and or manually delete the folder. So I just leave that there. These defaults uh, mappings, I also do the same unless, as you see here, there's a specific instance where you want to keep the GUID that uh, Windows creates. I don't. I let Mac do this for me. Uh, administrative, now again, you can do this here. You can set a specific user or group that you want, but I'm just going to leave this as is. Okay, close this up. Now, see, as you see, this is a pretty simple process, but like I said, everything's easy until it's not. So from here, we want to go ahead and click on options. Now you see I already have some users here. I tried this earlier today, the first time I tried connecting to Active Directory, and I just said all network users, so I didn't have to be specific. And I could not see any of these users when I logged in. I even restarted my machine, and I could not see any of these users. And I was going to demonstrate this on the uh, virtual machine today, but I had a hard time installing Yosemite because I have a slightly older version of uh, Parallels and VMware Fusion, so I was not able to. But basically, when you go to log in with this Active Directory user account, you're going to see you'll see your local account, and then to the right, you're going to see other. Just click on other and enter in your user account, your Active Directory user account, and you will be able to log in with that. But when I used all network users. I didn't see any of these users, so I actually had to manually enter them in there. So if you want to get rid of them, to multi-select, by the way, just click the shift key and you can select them all and we'll add them again. So this is great because you see your network users, um, you see your groups, you want to add them. Uh, and all these are on my Windows Server 2012 machine. So if I were to go there now and add one, it would just pop up on here again. So it's pretty quick. It's very, very nice feature. So you want to click on uh, whatever accounts you want to be able to log in with. Um, so maybe that by the time you see this, that whole network user thing that I had a problem with, the all network users over here, as of right now, I've tried it on two different machines and both times after restarting, I do not see any accounts that I can log into. So I specifically have to enter them in here. So once I do that, I click done. Now you can play around with some of these other options as you want, but right now we are bind it to the uh, Active Directory, and we have some users that we can log in with. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll be right back, and I'll show you what happens and, and show you that there's going to be a directory now listed here. All right, so now I've logged in with the Quinn account. Remember, that's one of the three accounts I have from the Windows Server 2012 Active Directory. I had the Hooper, I had the Quint, and I had the Chief Brody. And I logged in with a Quinn account. So what will happen is when you see, and within users, you see now I have that Quinn account. Now, if I were to create on this local machine a Quinn account, it will actually show up in a separate folder. It's totally separate accounts. It may share the same name, but it's a totally different account. Um, so on the flip side also, if I were to log in with the Chief Brody account or the Hooper account, you'd see the folder there. And that will not go away until I delete the account and delete the folder. So that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to have more for you in the future. Uh, this is Jesse for Bit the Brain. Thanks.